Hey, Dan. Hi, Rosara. Hi, Marika. And just a reminder to all the panelists to uh, please turn off your mics and your videos um, until it's your turn to speak or your answer comes up. Hey, Scott, you can turn off your video until your item comes up. <laughs> okay, thanks. Yep. You're going to have to give us last names, Aaron. Hi, Jennifer. Hi, how are you? I'm doing well, thank you. I'm going to be turning off your um, camera and microphone until the item comes up. Wonderful, then I can sit and drink my tea. Perfect. Okay. See you later. Mr. Hollis, you can turn off your camera and tell the items up. Hey, Maya. Maya? Yes. When we get to, to Ms. Powers' first item, do you want me to give it to you so you can introduce her? Oh, that would be great. Um, I was just actually drafting her an email of, uh, of how she wants to handle that. So that's perfect. Thanks. OK, that's how we'll do it, if I remember long enough. Chair Pont, um, it's six o'clock if you'd like to start the meeting. Thank you, Senor. Good evening. Welcome to the St. Helena Planning Commission meeting of Tuesday, April 6, 2021. Um, to get the meeting started, there's a paragraph I need to read about authorities uh, for doing Zoom meetings. So, in accordance with executive order, N29-20 and guidance from the California Department of Public Health on gatherings, remote public participation is allowed. We will address the order in the following ways. Members of the public may not physically attend meetings. The Planning Commission meeting will be live streamed on Comcast Channel 28 and on the city's website, barring technical difficulties. 
those members of the public wishing to participate must do so remotely. The Zoom electronic meetings in the following ways, either by either logging onto the Zoom link located on the meeting agenda, please download the app to your computer or mobile device and enter the meeting ID or by calling a listed number and enter the meeting ID. Public comment for planning commission meetings will be accepted via email to public comment at cityofstanelina.org. All public comments must be emailed by four o'clock p.m. prior to the meeting. Emailed public comments will not be read out loud, but will be publicly available and attached to the online planning commission agenda. Uh, Ms. Gamero, you have additional information for us? I do. Let me pull up the slide share one moment. Okay, perfect. Um, for members of the public who would like to participate during public comments, you may dial 669-900-6833. At the prompt, you should enter the meeting ID, which is 847-2922-7948, then press pound. And during public comment, you can press nine to speak. Additionally, let me share another screen. Tonight's meeting will have a live Spanish interpretation. To access the interpretation, you will need to use the Zoom application from either your cell phone, tablet, or computer. Instructions on how to use the Zoom app are listed in English and Spanish on the agenda posted on the city's website. Once you join the meeting from the Zoom application, you will see a small globe at the bottom or top of the screen. Click on the globe and you will be able to access the live interpretation. Uh, we have Marcy and Claudia as uh, the interpreters for tonight's meeting. Okay. Thank you. Um, with that, um, Commissioner Hale, or Vice Chair Hale, would you mind leading us in the Pledge of Allegiance, please? After turning off your mute. Oh, oh sorry about that. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. I'd like to call the meeting to order. Um, Ms. Gamero, will you take the roll, please? Commissioner Anderson? Here. Commissioner Segura? Here. Commissioner Rothfeld? Here. Vice Chair Hale? Here. And Chair Pont? Here. Thank you. Um, that takes us down to public forum. This is an opportunity for the public to address the commission on items of interest to the public that are not listed on the agenda. Because of the restrictions imposed by the Brown Act, the commission may not engage in discussion nor take action on matters not described on the agenda. Please observe the time limit of four minutes. Uh, do we have anybody who wishes to speak? Are there any hands out there in the electronic universe? No hands up, uh, Chair Pont. All right, thank you. Uh, we'll move on to the consent item then. Number four, members of the commission of the public may ask. <coughs> Sorry about that. Members of the commission of the public may ask that any items be considered individually for purposes of considering alternative action for extended discussion or for public comment. Unless that is done, one motion may be used to adopt all recommended actions. We have two items on the consent agenda tonight. 4.1, approval of minutes of March 2nd, and 4.2, appointment of Commissioners Anderson and Segura to the 2023-2031 sixth cycle housing element update focus group. Is there anyone in the public who wishes to poll? either of these two items. 
Ms. Camaro, no hands? Uh, no, no hands up. Um, Is there any member of the commission that wishes to pull either of these items? All right, I, I wish to pull uh, 4.1 for a small fix. Um, that leaves us with item 4.2. Um, um, a motion is in order on the consent agenda as it stands, which is item 4.2. Do I hear a motion? Daniel? I move that we uh, approve consent item 4.2. Is there a second? Commissioner Segura? Second. Mm -hmm. Ms. Gamero, will you uh, tally the votes, please? Uh, Vice Chair Hale? Yes. Commissioner Pont? I mean, I'm, I apologize. Commissioner Segura? Yes. Commissioner Anderson? Yes. Commissioner Rothfeld? Yes. And Chair Pont? Yes. Um, so we go back to item uh, 4.1, which is the minutes of the second. I have one small change to request. Um, under public hearings, uh, under number two, um, it reads, no ex parte communication was disclosed between the commissioners. I would like that to read by the commissioners. Uh, commissioners themselves uh, don't really qualify for ex parte communication um, as it is defined in our code, which is basically communication between either opponents or uh, including a tour of the site um, outside of the meeting. Um, so I'm just asking for a change of between to by the, which is really closer to what it should be. Hey, noted, Chair Pons, the changes will be made as amended. Okay. Um, can I have a motion on the minutes as amended? Unless somebody has an objection to the amendment, of course. I move to approve uh, the minutes as amended. Thank you, Commissioner. Do we have a second? I second. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, Ms. Gamero, will you uh, tally the votes, please? Commissioner Segura? Yes. Commissioner Anderson? Yes. Commissioner Rothfeld? Yes. Vice Chair Hale? Yes. Chair Pont? Yes. Which takes us to public hearings. And our first public hearing tonight is item 5.1. Um, request by Refigo Holdings LLC for design review approval in order to make exterior modifications to the existing building on the property located at 1334 Vidovich in the service commercial zoning district. Um, so um, I'd like to uh, open the public hearing on this. And this is the opportunity for any commissioner to uh, fess up to any ex parte communications they have had over this item. Vice Chair Hale. Yeah, I've, I've visited the site and I've, I've spoken with um, Scott Gay about, he, he explained the, uh, the project to me, so. Thank you for that. Anyone else? No. Um, uh, Mr. Hecock, I believe this is your item, is it not? It is, thank you, Chair Pont. Um, so the existing building at 1334 Vitovich is a 4,950 square foot building uh, as noted in the staff report and plan set. Uh, it is not 5,092 as noted in the applicant's written statement. So I just wanted to clarify that. Um, the building is located toward the rear of a 1.65 acre commercially zoned property. Uh, the property is home to several other buildings, including La Azteca and Cliff Family Winery. Zine, if you wouldn't mind pulling up that PDF that I provided uh, that shows um, the- I am uh, I, yes, I am currently trying to pull up the screen share. I'm having uh, difficulty, so I will uh, pull it up as soon as I'm able to. Okay, okay. 
Uh, so the home or the property is home to several other buildings, including La Azteca and Cliff Family Winery. In April 2019, the Planning Commission approved a 16 seat tasting wine tasting room within the building. Uh, in addition to the wine tasting room, the existing building houses a beauty salon, office spaces, storage and restrooms. Uh, the beauty salon and office space are permitted uses in the service commercial district. No expansion in the number of permitted seats of the 16 seat tasting room is being proposed and the tasting room is required to operate in accordance with the previously approved use permit. The applicant is requesting design review approval in order to remodel and modernize the existing building. The applicant is proposing to make structural and aesthetic upgrades to the exterior walls and roof, structural upgrades to the interior walls, a new interior layout, enhanced landscaping, including a new trellis over an existing outdoor space, a new entrance to the building as well. The exterior would be finished with board and batten, vertical louvered wood siding, stucco, tile, and perforated cortine steel. Dark gray aluminum planters with native drought tolerant plants would be integrated into the building's exterior. All windows and doors would have bronze anodized aluminum frames. The height of the building is currently 12 feet, nine inches, while the remodel building would be 13 feet, 10 inches to the top of the roof, and then 16 feet to the top of the parapet facade. No changes are being proposed to the square footage, footprint or commercial use of the existing building. Interior changes are permitted through the building permit process while the exterior changes require design review approval. While the subject property is designated mixed use in the general plan update, currently no mixed use zoning standards exist. Therefore, the underlying zoning district still uh, is considered to be service commercial. The service commercial designation provides for service and retail uses, restaurant, service stations, motels, public and quasi-public uses, and similar incompatible uses. The designation is intended primarily for service and retail uses that are automobile oriented uh, or whose operational characteristics and space needs are not considered appropriate for the central business district. Design review is required for exterior modifications to any existing structure or buildings for both permitted and conditional uses in the service commercial district. As previously noted, no changes are being, being proposed to the building's location, square footage, or commercial use. A project consists of interior and exterior modifications only. The existing building does have non-conforming side yard and rear yard setbacks that will not change. The proposed project would lessen several existing non-conformances by reducing water demand uh, and adding additional landscaping. While some on-site parking spaces are non-conforming for their location, the, the site does meet on the on-site parking requirement. The existing non-conformities are permitted to remain without triggering the need uh, to meet existing code requirements. Staff is recommending a condition of approval be added to the resolution to reflect that no signage is approved as part of this design review. Uh, any new signage will, will require sign permit approval as appropriate. Uh, the building is located south of the Sulphur Creek Bridge where commercial development embodies the characteristics more typical of auto-oriented strip commercial development. A principal concern is encouraging the renovation and redevelopment of commercial sites to create a more attractive southern entrance to the city and a more vital, inviting commercial environment. The current building is painted concrete block with a shallow sloped roof and is architecturally unremarkable. The applicant desires to improve the aesthetics of the site with a newly clad building that will better match the site and its surroundings. While there is no unified design character of the buildings on the existing site and in the service commercial district west of Highway 29 in general, the proposed improvements to the existing dated building would improve the aesthetics of the building itself while also improving the visual environment of the overall site. For these reasons, staff believes that the proposed design changes are consistent with the design review criteria listed in the staff report and is recommending the Planning Commission determine that the project is exempt the requirements of CEQA pursuant to CEQA guidelines sections 15301 and 15302 and accept the required findings and adopt a resolution approving design review for the exterior modifications to the existing building at 1334 Vitovich Avenue. That concludes my presentation and I would be happy to answer any questions that you may have. I also know that the applicant is prepared uh, to give a brief presentation as well. 
Are there any questions of staff at this point? No? Um, seeing none, uh, I will invite the applicant to uh, please uh, make your statement. Hello, everyone. Good evening. Um, so you know, we prepared that that uh, uh, PDF presentation just briefly um, for uh, just staff's request, um, and just trying to give a, a highlight of the of the project or, and address any questions that anybody might have. Um, do you have that available? There we go. That's it. Yeah. So if you could go ahead and flip to the next page, that'd be great. Thank you. Um, so the idea here was just to kind of give uh, the planning commission and the public just an idea of, you know, what the the entire property looks like um, and, and what's been what's been happening on the property. Um, we've owned the property since 2015. Um, the principles of Cliff Family Winery. So that's when. Um, uh, we actually took title of the property and that, so as Aaron described, that includes tenants such as, of course, Cliff itself, and then um, Azteca Market. Um, now we, um, Hayfork Wines, the Welling Ranch, um, there's an artist, Vinquery, which is, you know, wine supplies. Uh, AMR Ambulance has their station there uh, towards the rear of the property as well. Um, and then previous tenants have included uh, well, actually, going way back in history, this is actually uh, part of Central Valley's original um, Central Valley Builder Supply, their original property where they had a paint shop and some other supply things for it. But um, properties included such uses as, you know, actually an architect's office, real estate office, um, and these are uses in 1334. Um, like Aaron described, it's been a hair salon, a day spa. Um, and our intention here is really to drive more energy towards the rear of the property. Um, Cliff has had a, a good measure of success in I think both being a, a community resource and a public resource. Uh, and the same thing goes for Azteca Market as well. Um, but we've tried to work harder to sort of bring traffic back um, towards the rear of the property and and uh, making use of the buildings that we have, you know, as they're designed. So um, that was where, you know, looking at the use and getting the approval for the tasting room, um, mo actually moving an existing use permit back to 1334 um, so that we were able to really figure out whether or not the economic, um, you know, vitality of that building, being able to take advantage of you know, the vineyard views and I think a little bit of its secluded nature, but bringing, I think, a a balanced measure of traffic um, back towards the, the rear of the property, the west side. So um, Matt Hollis, the uh, the architect um, that we've been working with um, for a long time, waving, um, he can speak a little bit more to, I think, the existing elevations and proposals and, and floor plan and all that. So I'll cede the floor to him. Thank you, Scott. And uh, thank you, members of the commission, uh, letting you guys talk about the project um, maybe Meryl, uh, uh, advance to the next. So as Aaron had described earlier, the uh, existing building is about 100 feet long. It's a uh, cinder block masonry. Um, it's uh, a very simple building. And uh, for the purposes of a new tasting room and um, offices um, for Cliff Family Wines, it seemed appropriate to upgrade it. And uh, in order to um, lubricate the planning approval process, we decided not to expand the building footprint and not put any uh, addition, add any additional square footage, not put a, a second story on top, but uh, concentrate on uh, improving the existing structure. So um, it, uh, basically we've replaced 
um, all of the windows and doors. And um, we are refinishing both the exterior and the interior of the structure. Um, next slide, please. So the uh, proposed material palette is intended to be natural. Um, we've got a variety of different types of material finishes that are found throughout Napa Valley. It's found throughout St. Helena. Um, we're not trying to do anything um, uh, too wild and progressive, um, but rather we're trying to take a, a, a lot of different materials that people are used to seeing and seem familiar about the area and maybe present them in a, um, a clean um, contemporary way. Um, the facade is intentionally um, a, uh, a set of recessing planes to create some shadow play and relief and interest in the building, uh, as opposed to what is there currently just one flat wall trying to um, within the footprint of the building, create some complexity in the facade and some, some interest. Um, you can see that on the corner, it's basically composed of uh, board and bat uh, siding, wooden siding with a clear seal wrapping around the corner. Um, there are elements of stucco and then of uh, Corten steel and tile and glass. Um, and then integrated into the facade is a, a planter, uh, derived swale for um, site drainage. Um, and sort of, uh, we, we have the same plants that are in the bioswale basically in the raised planter just below the windows. And so the, the, the landscape is in effect kind of stepping up the facade. Uh, next slide, please. And the, um, uh, this slide does a good job in showing that uh, in the rear of the building, there is uh, some, uh, it's basically a, um, an open courtyard. The, the building is somewhat L-shaped wrapping around this courtyard. And the courtyard is uh, composed of uh, drought tolerant landscaping and uh, permeable uh, horizontal hardscapes. Uh, designed by Terramoto landscape architects who are very highly esteemed. Um, <clears throat> um, basically, the long and the short of it is the site is right next to a beautiful vineyard uh, with a great view of the Maya commas. Excuse me. So both the um, hospitality uh, tasting area on the um, extreme left um, and the, uh, the office area uh, on the right side of the plan, they both benefit from the views looking westward, which would be up the page. Next slide. And then this is the final slide that uh, it, it's a rendering intended to show the, um, the richness of the materials, um, Show, sort of show off the natural uh, palette that I mentioned. Um, you know, what, what color there is introduced to the building is intended to be earth tone and uh, restrained. Um, and then of course there's a, um, a trellis I forgot to mention at the entry, which um, gets some nice shade on the entry area. And uh, again, is another plane. Um, to create some um, formal play. Uh, that's the end of my presentation. Um, if anybody has any questions, I'm, I'm certainly happy to field them. Does any member of the commission have any questions for the applicant? I don't see any. Um, then we'll move on. Oh, uh, Commissioner Segura, I just saw, saw your hand, please. I, thank you. 
Thank you very much. No, I was wondering, um, the present tenants, they're gonna relocate? Um, there, there are no present tenants now. The, oh, the, okay. Building, okay. the building is, is vacated. So um, when we purchased the property, there was, uh, there was a real estate office, <clears throat> excuse me, um, that it was actually to, was forced to vacate. Um, it was a Sotheby's office. And um, by the brand Sotheby's, it didn't meet their, um, their brand guidelines you know, for their location and traffic and all that. So they were actually forced to, to vacate at the time. So, um, and then after that, there was um, Bill Lefever Salon had been there um, for a long time. Um, and he ended up moving to Calistoga. So, and then Cliff has always had the other side of the building. So at this point, no tenants, no, no new tenants, no lost tenants or anything like that. Thank you. Any other questions of the applicant at this time? Hearing none. Um, Ms. Gamera, are there any uh, electronic hands waved around out there? Uh, we're inviting uh, members of the public to testify on this project. Um, are there anybody who wishes of the public who wishes to speak? There are no members of the public that wish to speak at the moment. All right. Um, well, then I will uh, close the public hearing and uh, bring it back to the commission for a discussion. Is there a commissioner who cares to volunteer to talk about this project first or not, as the case may be? No, Commissioner Anderson. I'll go. Um, I really like this project. I think it's great and I don't have any issues with it. I like the materials that are being used and um, I like the idea of getting more traffic back there. So good job. Does any other commissioner have anything to say on the project? No? I agree. I think it's an underutilized space and I think it's really well executed and will increase traffic in that area in a place that has a lot of potential for more use, like because it has a Tata there and it's just, it's a great use of the space, I think. Thank you. Um, anyone else? Commissioner Hale, please. Um, I have, Vice Chair Hale, I'll get that right. Yeah, yeah. Um, I have no um, questions or concerns about the project. I think it um, makes makes sense to me. It seems um, reasonable, and I support it. So, Commissioner Segura, you have anything to add? Um, congratulations on wanting to make that part of Saint Helena uh, more beautiful. Um, it, good project, thank you. Well, I can only agree with the rest of the commission. It was a remarkably poor looking building. Your drawings gonna make it look a lot better. Um, with that, let me ask uh, Ms. Gamero, has any member of the public raised their hand yet? No members of the public have their hands raised. Well, then the public hearing stays closed. And it is time and it's appropriate for someone to make a motion on this item, if they would please. Uh, I have uh, one clarification question. Oh, so this is the preliminary sketches, right? And are, are they, as I understood it, they're gonna come back with more refined um, sketches or? No, the, the, it's the approval is for the building as designed and, and presented this evening. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So I move to approve the design of the new building at Vidovich Avenue. Yes. Second. Uh, sorry to interrupt. There, there was the uh, additional condition of approval, so we would need to, to approve as amended uh, if the commission so desires to do so. Uh, Commissioner Segura, will you uh, take that small change to your motion? I do. So let's see. I move to approve 
the remodeling of the building with the condition of it's the signage correct yes it, is that okay that they will come back for a sign permit as appropriate with uh conditional that they come back with a sign uh seem deemed appropriate for saint helena and uh code and I believe Commissioner Anderson, you seconded the motion. Was that you? No, mere, mere day. Or we mere both day. tried. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I will. I, I second as amended. That's fine. All right. Uh, Ms. Gamero, will you uh, count the votes, please? Commissioner Segura? Yes. Vice Chair Hale? Yes. Commissioner Anderson? Yes. Commissioner Rothfeld? Yes. And Chair Hart, uh, Chair Pont, excuse me. Thank you. Yes. Uh, I think uh, he would be very unhappy, but we'll let that go. Uh, so that takes us to, thank you very much, gentlemen. That takes us to item 5.2. Uh, request by Jack Hare, property owner, for adoption of a resolution granting design review and approval in order to accommodate the construction of a single family dwelling and accessory dwelling on undeveloped property located at 777 Pratt Avenue in the A20, the Agricultural 20 zoning district. Um, Director DeRosa, please. Yes, um, I'd like to take this opportunity to introduce the Planning Commission to uh, our contract planner, uh, Chantal Power, who's with Interwest Consulting. And uh, we've, uh, she's helping us catch up from uh, getting behind on a lot of work uh, with the busyness of last year and the fire. So um, I will, without further ado, um, Chantal, um, please uh, go forward with your case and we're really glad to have you on board. All right, thank you, Maya. Um, good evening, commissioners. Nice to meet everyone. Um, I'm gonna just take a moment to share my screen. All right. There we go. All right. So uh, this item is uh, des for design review file number PL20-046. Um, property located at 777 Pratt Avenue um, within the Agricultural General Plan Land Use District and the A20 um, Zoning District. Uh, but as this property is only um, one acre in size, um, it was reviewed under the development requirements of the LR um, 1A Zoning District. Um, the request is to construct a single family dwelling and several accessory structures and on-site um, recreational amenities. Um, and as the um, city is in uh, a phase two water emergency, um, we just wanted to highlight that this project would be using an existing well on the site. And so city water will not be impacted. Um, and in fact, uh, Maya, I think I need to ask you if we need to also read in um, the new condition um, number 18 for the phase water uh, emergency, phase two water emergency. Uh, I'm not sure if that got, um, if that got put into the final resolution. I think it did. I believe it did. Okay, then, then we're good uh, on that. Um, all right, Whoop, sorry. Okay, here's the site plan. Um, you can see it is a large structure, um, a little bit under 5,000 square feet in total square footage for the main um, residence. And then we have an 80 square foot pump house and a 995 square foot accessory dwelling unit. Um, also, one, one other note on the accessory dwelling unit, the resolution does state um, that the accessory dwelling unit is part of the project, um, and it is part of the project, but as you know, uh, uh, the planning commission um, is not able to make a determination on the accessory dwelling unit, so 
um, that description for the re resolution will be amended um, to reflect um, that we're just approving the single family residence um, and the, the other amenities on site. Um, and, but I just, out of transparency, wanted you to understand that, that uh, the accessory dwelling unit is um, part of this um, overall construction project. Um, that being said, the allowable floor area, um, the floor area ratio for the project in the, uh, under the LR1A uh, development standards is 6,069 um, square feet. They are exceeding that, um, but those standards do um, give uh, additional square footage allowances for ADUs garages and non-habitable non accessory buildings. And so um, they do actually meet um, the square footage allowance. Okay, um, floor plan, you can see it's a nice um, open floor plan. Uh, we have uh, a large uh, garage, so there's extra parking. There's also extra park, uh, a large uh, driveway, so extra parking there for any visitors that may come to, to the site. Um, we have four bedrooms, uh, basically on the south, um, south wing of, of the home, uh, and uh, four bedrooms as well. Sorry, four bathrooms as well. Um, we have a kitchen, an open, uh, open floor plan kitchen, dining room and living room area um, with an adjacent scullery. Um, there's a wine room and a great room kind of centrally located um, in the main structure. Um, and we do have, uh, it, it's, it's a bit hard to tell from, from this site plan, but this outdoor kitchen and bathroom is attached to the main um, dwelling via um, this loggia um, on the on the back side of, of the house. Um, we also have another terrace just off the great room and another loggia um, off of the um, master bedroom. Um, you can see that the architecture was thoughtfully designed for the area. Um, it is a contemporary design, um, but um, implementing some rustic materials and colors so it wouldn't be out of character with, uh, with the, the rural nature of, of the area, um, being outside of the urban limit line and within that um, agricultural zoning district. Um, it was also designed as a single story home. And though it is a, a large home, it's set back approximately 90 feet from the street. So, um, so it won't create, you know, an imposing figure at the, at the street level. Um, and I just wanted to highlight a, a little bit of information here about some easements um, that have been granted to this property um, from the adjacent parcel. Um, we have an approximately three acre area um, uh, designated as a view shed easement um, to maintain the view of the vineyards to the east. Um, and within that, um, that three acre easement area, there is a smaller easement um, for septic reserve. Um, now the project is designing um, the septic facilities to be contained entirely within their parcel. Um, but this reserve area is um, intended to be a backup um, septic site in case um, the, the leach field um, happens to fail, the, the currently proposed leach field um, happens to fail. Um, that really concludes uh, my presentation. Um, and so I'm gonna go ahead and make a recommendation um, and then allow the commissioners to um, ask questions of myself. And I believe the um, project applicant and design team is available for questions as well. Um, so with that, um, staff recommends that the Planning Commission determine that the project is exempt from the requirements of CEQA pursuant to section 15303 uh, and accept the findings and approve a resolution granting de design review approval for the proposed construction of the project located at 777 Pratt Avenue. And with that, I'll open up to questions. Sorry. Thank you. Do any of the commissioners have questions for staff? 
I can't, let's see, here we go. No, um, no questions? I do have, I do have a couple. Um, let's start with uh, item 14 on the planning department conditions of approval. Was that removed? Uh, was that the trash enclosure requirement? Yes, that refers to the open space district. Okay. Not to the H20. Um, sorry, that hasn't been removed, uh, but I can do that. Um, that so code section is, is for open space only. Sure, okay. Okay. Um, I'll remove that from the final resolution. Thank you. Um, I have a question on the uh, on the outdoor, <laughs> which is written down on the staff report as 165 square foot outdoor kitchen bathroom. Um, I don't think I'd approve of an outdoor bathroom, but there you go. Um, I think it's intended primarily so that. Um, people can just jump out of the, the pool and go and change and shower um, without I, I, dragging water throughout the house. I recognize that, but I'm just reading literally what it says. Okay. Um, how substantial is this connection? And is there any limit on the size of an auxiliary building based on having a connection to the main structure? I don't believe that there is a limit as long as it is under the same roof, um, which which it is. Uh, is it an open roof? It's not an enclosed the, roof, is it? The, it's just a the, beam running across, correct? The, the loggia would be an open roof, yes. Yes, okay. Um, frankly, that seems a little... Um, Weak to my mind that you can uh, bypass literally a requirement that says no plumbing in an auxiliary structure literally by tying a beam to the main building. Um, but there it is. Uh, it may be something that we want to spend more time looking at as we go through our zoning code revision uh, because clearly this, you know, without that beam. Uh, this would not be a legal auxiliary structure. Uh, that's all I have. Any have anyone have any other questions for staff? No. Uh, well, now's the time to hear from the project proponent. Um, so please uh, try to keep your presentation to ten minutes or less. Thank you. Uh, thank you, commissioners um, and staff. I uh, appreciate you guys reviewing our project and uh, giving us the time. Um, I have Joel from Madrone Engineering, Joel Dickerson and uh, Joe Farrell, both local uh, architects, civil engineers. Um, so my family has been renting in St. Helena for the past uh, three years. And we found this location, 77 Pratt and fell in love with it. Um, we like the proximity to downtown and we liked being around the vineyards and, um, and it was something we fell in love with. And we've been working with Joe to create a project that, you know, as Chantel said, you know, has very rustic um, elements to it, being our corrugated metal roof, vertical cedar siding. Um, you know, this is not meant to be an eyesore at all. We, we really wanted it to blend in with the community and a lot of the design we pulled from local projects all throughout the area. Um, so again, we, I appreciate you letting me present and if there's any questions you have that I can't answer, Joe or Joel are here as well. So thank you. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions of the project proponent? No. Uh, don't see any. Uh, yes, Commissioner. I mean, Director DeRosa. 
Um, yes, I actually uh, just uh, got um, communication from our uh, <clears throat> acting uh, city engineer, John Wanger, that there was actually a slight modification to condition number 18. And, uh, and I apologize that that did not get um, uploaded, but um, I can read the new one into the record if you just hold on for a moment or go forward with any other discussion. But just before you make a motion, I just wanna make sure that we have the right one in the, in the record. So I just wanted to interject with that. Okay, we will, we will come back to you uh, when we get closer. Any, uh, any questions of the project proponent? I don't see any hands. So, um, Ms. Gamero, this is the time we take uh, public testimony, uh, either for or against the project. Uh, Ms. Gamero, is there anybody out there who uh, wishes to speak on the project? There are no members of the public wishing to speak at the moment. All right, I will uh, come back to you in a few minutes and check again, but for right now we will uh, close the public hearing and uh, bring it back to the commission. Um, does any commission member- have the condition. We'll get to you here in a second. Um, before any motions made, we'll have you read that section so we're all clear on what it says. Um, any members of the commission have anything to say on this project or any questions to ask that they haven't asked previously? I don't see any hands. Oh. I, I do have one concern that I wanna bring up and it's not particularly on this project per se, it's on projects of this type um, in the A20. Um, I do not think since the A20 is basically the urban reserve for the city, um, I do not think the intent of the A20 was at its base uh, to fill it up with very, very, very large houses. Um, this is another in a series of very large houses in the A20 that we've seen over the past 18 months to two years. Um, I am not distressed, but somewhat unhappy. Um, with the idea of what was our urban reserve uh, becomes full of houses that are so large um, that they will never be developed as anything else. Um, but that being said, this is a completely legal use. Um, I don't see anything incorrect with the application or the way the approach is to the structure. Uh, but nonetheless, this is another series of very, very, very large houses. Um, with that, um, unless anyone has anything else to say, I don't see any hands. Oh, uh, Commissioner Anderson, please. My hand just keeps disappearing. Um, along those same lines, um, I am concerned with the viewshed easement. Um, there's nothing wrong with this project or with having a view shed easement, um, but I am concerned how that is going to affect the city as it expands. Um, we have a really large need for more housing and um, I'm not sure any of us really know how that's going to affect things in the long term. Thank you. Anyone else? Thank you. Let me ask uh, Ms. Gamero one more time. Uh, is there one? Oh, I'm sorry, Present. Commissioner Segur. Thank you. No, I, I, I was also going to comment on the project, but I didn't know how, and then I didn't know if I would need it to be politically correct, politically correct. 
Um, it's a beautiful gargantuan project. And I was trying to, in my mind, I was trying to figure out what Pratt Avenue is now. And that, uh, that beautiful house is going to um, make it look not agricultural. <laughs> Um, so, but like you said, there's nothing we can do. And, um, and this is something to discuss privately on to how and when, if we can, you know, have more restrictions on, on projects like this, but anyway, it's beautiful. It's gorgeous. And, um, it's like you said, it's the law and, uh, we have no grounds to deny, but so that those are my comments. Thank you. Anyone else? Oh, uh, Commissioner Anderson, please. I'm just going to say that the problem with these projects aren't that they aren't beautiful. Every single excessively large home that comes across our agendas are beautiful. Um, and I can at least appreciate that. But um, as we lose more and more space in the city, um, I, I would like to I would like to lose it for more good. I want more people to have homes um, on the space that we do have. Thank you. Commissioner Rothfeld, Commissioner Hale, do you have any comments? No. Uh, let me ask uh, uh, Ms. Gamero one more time if there's anyone out there who cares to uh, speak on the project. Um, there are no members of the public wishing to speak, but it looks like a panelist, Ms. Mary Stevenson, has her hand up. Okay. I will ask you to unmute yourself. One I will uh, reopen the public hearing then. Uh, Ms. Stevenson, please. Uh, good evening. Um, I, I would just like to say I appreciate the planning commissioners speaking up about their concerns about the fact that we're building more 5,000 square foot houses than we are houses for people who actually work and live and uh, contribute to the community. Uh, it's a very difficult political thing for you to do, particularly when you're looking at a plan tonight, which fits, fits all the needs. But if we don't start talking about this openly and broadly and deeply, we are never going to build any more housing here for locals. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I will, uh, any, any others, Ms. Gamero? Do not see any other hands up uh, at your pond. We uh, close the public hearing then um, and bring it back to the commission and uh, since we have no more comments from the commission members, I will ask uh, uh, Director DeRosa to please read the language into the record. It should be in number 18, that I presume yes. is now number 17, but please. Yes, so we are replacing that. Uh, the condition now reads, in accordance with St. Helena Municipal Code, section 1300, subsection C4, as the city is currently in a phase three water emergency, this subject property is outside the existing urban limit line as shown in the plan. Because the property is outside the urban limit line. Is, there, no is anyone else not hearing? Yeah. Um, Your audio is going in and out. Uh, okay. Um, alternately, I could ask um, John Wanger if he wants to read the condition, if his audio is working better. You're Actually, clear you're right now, Maya. It seems when you when you lean forward a little bit, that works a little better. Okay. Uh, let me start again. Okay. Thank you. All right. In accordance with St. Helena Municipal Code Section 1304-240, subsection C4, the city is currently in a phase two water emergency. The subject property is outside the existing urban limit line as shown in the general plan. Because the property is outside the urban limit line, no public utilities will be provided to the property unless a health and safety concern arises. 
Accordingly, the project must rely on water for all domestic and irrigation needs from the existing on-site well. Because all water to the site will be provided from an existing on-site well, the project will not rely on any city utility services and therefore is not subject to the restrictions of not being able to issue a building permit during the phase two water emergency. Thank you. Thank you. Any, uh, any questions or comments on this uh, changed condition? Seeing none. And oh, by the way, I, if, if I have trouble seeing you, I apologize. But your, uh, your whole thing boils down to about an inch and a quarter by two inch box. So sometimes it's difficult to see. Um, all right. If there's no more discussion at the commission and the public hearing has been closed, uh, a motion at this time would be appropriate. Does anyone care to make a motion on this project? Commissioner Hale? I move that we um, find the project exempt from CEQA and uh, approve it as amended with the, uh, the amended condition of approval. And, and to the title of the resolution too, by the way. Um, <laughs> Is there a second to this motion? Do I see a second? I'll uh, second. Thank you, Commissioner Anderson. So we have a motion and a second. Uh, Ms. Gamero, will you take the vote tally, please? Vice Chair Hale? Yes. Commissioner Anderson? Yes. Commissioner Rothfeld? Yes. Commissioner Segura? Yes. And Chair Pont? Yes. Thank you. That takes us to uh, item 5.3, uh, request by Patrick Rue of Erosion Wine Company to grant a use permit approval to establish a small brewery operation, Erosion Brewery, at an existing wine storage and distribution warehouse located at 995 Vintage Avenue number 108 in the industrial zoning district. Um, Ms. Power, this one looks like yours as well. Yep. Please. Yes, sir. All right. All right, this request is use permit file PL 20-050. Again, located at 995 Vintage Avenue, Suite 108 within the Industrial General Plan Land Use District and the Industrial Zoning District. Um, currently, the space is occupied by Erosion Wine, which is a wine storage and distribution facility. And the applicant wishes to add a small brewing operation to that facility, um, no expansion of the structure or tenant space is proposed um, at all. Just uh, some, some equipment will be um, brought in um, for the brewing operations. Um, this would uh, under normal circumstances be a somewhat water heavy um, or water intensive use, um, but with um, the upgrade to um, water fixtures that the project applicant has proposed along with some um, operational mitigations um, that'll bring the water usage down to approximately um, 22 gallons per day. Um, some days will we'll fluctuate a little bit, but that, that would be um, the, the average, um, which is far less than um, what you would see with a single family home. Uh, just a few details on the site plan and floor plan here. Um, we have our existing structure is 12,375 square feet and the tenant space that is currently occupied um, and, and no changes to the occupant uh, or to, to that tenant space um, is 2,750 square feet. Um, and we have 33 on-site parking spaces, um, which 
even with the the parking that's um, uh, required of uh, the operational expansion to this tenant, um, you still have some some excess um, parking spaces that aren't currently in use. Um, we have a 450 square foot office with mezzanine for storage um, and two existing um, temperature controlled shipping containers that are used for wine storage. Um, and then in the, the, the left hand corner um, of the, the building approximately uh, or this tenant space approximately 350 square feet of the tenant space. Um, will be used um, to house that, um, that brewing operational equipment. Uh, again, uh, just going over the parking requirement, um, the, based on um, the uh, St. Helena Municipal Code, uh, this particular operation requires a total of five parking spaces. Um, five parking spaces are, are actually what has been allocated to them um, by the um, property owner. And um, as I mentioned earlier, of the total 33 parking spaces, um, only 28 of the parking spaces would be used. And that's inclusive of those five parking spaces required of this project. Um, additionally, um, the tenant or the project applicant has uh, made it known um, that um, there would be a maximum of three to five employees um, at this use, uh, and it sounds like um, it will probably be closer to the, to the smaller number, to, to three employees. Um, again, because water usage is an issue right now, um, we wanted to, to make sure that you understood how um, the water would be used for this. Um, move this out of the way a little bit so I can see my slide. <laughs> All right. Um, Without mitigation, the proposed brewing operation would use approximately 16,993 gallons of water per year. Um, but the project applicant is upgrading the toilet and sink fixture, which alone will save 7,140 gallons, uh, 45 gallons per year. Um, the average batch is, um, is um, 108.5 gallons. And um, he's looking at about 56 batches per year. So roughly one per week, although that will actually um, change a little bit based on um, the project mitigation. So some, some of the, uh, the brewing activities, you'll, you'll have potentially um, two brews in one day. Um, and in that way, um, the project can save a little bit on some of the water used for cleaning and, and cycling through batches. Um, so, you know, that, that initial um, 303 gallons that, that's used for the initial um, brewing of, of a batch um, can be mitigated if you do more than one batch in a day. It will still um, average out to about one batch per week. Um, all right, so um, that being said, yes, so each, um, each cycle, um, if, you, if you brew two batches in one day, you can save about 75 gallons total, which averages up to about 37.5 gallons per batch. Um, and with that, those mitigation, um, operational mitigations added in, you would um, save an additional 7,748 gallons per year. Um, which brings it down to um, approximately 21 to 22 gallons per day. Um, and just for reference, an average single family home uses about 100 to two count, uh, 200 gallons per day. Uh, with that being said, uh, that concludes my presentation and I'll make a recommendation to the Planning Commission. Um, staff re recommends that the Planning Commission determine that the project is exempt from the requirements of CEQA pursuant to section 15301 for existing facilities and accept the required findings and approve a resolution granting conditional use permit approval for the proposed brewery operation located 
at an existing wine storage and distribution facility at 995 Vintage Avenue, Suite 108. And I can open it up to questions. We also have the project applicant um, available for questions. Thank you. Uh, does any commissioner have a question for staff on this item? Okay. I have. Uh, may, I have may I? Oh, please, Commissioner Segura. Uh, uh, the 35 parking spaces, that's for the entire building or uh, assigned there, for the. There, there are currently 33 parking spaces for the, the whole uh, complex, yes. Okay, and they're going to be used 28? No, currently a total of 28 are used and that's including the five okay. that are required by this project. Yeah, so they're okay. only going to use five. Five, yeah. right. thank you. Yeah. Any others? Um, I do have a couple on the, on the water use. Uh, we seem to be in receipt of a letter from the applicant uh, that basically says they're going to alter their brewing process uh, such to do two batches at a time, one, one, one right after the other, boom, boom. Mm -hmm. um, right. Let's contribute to their water savings. Yes. Um, how do we write that into the resolution? So it becomes part of the record. So it's clear. Um, right, right now, the resolution says, uh, uh, you know, 50, 52 batches, I believe the resolution says, 52 like batches million. of uh, 108 and a half gallons a batch. Uh, no limits on water used at all. Uh, but the uh, applicant is volunteering to go 56 batches. And if he does this uh, double tap, if you will, uh, he saves 37 and a half gallons a, a, a shot. Um, how do we write that in a resolution such that it is now uh, fixed, if you will? Uh, we, can, we can write a condition that essentially states that um, the operations will have to comply with um, the letter that the applicant um, provided um, stating that they would not exceed um, you know, the amount of water um, provided in the letter um, and that if there is any time when they would like to expand their brewing operation and exceed that water usage, that they will have to bring it back to the, the, um, to the commissioner, the commissioner. Yeah. Um, I, I so, would like to- uh, I'll, I'll work on the line, language with uh, um, Director um, DeRosa. I, I, I would like to uh, thank the applicant for recognizing that water use since we only got 40% of normal rain this year is turning into a hot button item. Uh, and frankly, we're phase two now, but uh, I can't see us avoiding phase three. Um, and your original proposal at 40 gallons a day uh, was almost right at the phase three maximum per person. So I think it's very good that you, you work to lower that number. Um, but I think we want to fix it into the resolution uh, to be assured that, that that is exactly what happens. And when people say, well, you allowed him to do this, we allowed them to do this, and there's very severe reduction in what they were going to use originally and with some requirements to their operating parameters to bring that down as low as possible. Um, a, a second question of staff. Um, is it true that it's not the use that requires water neutrality, but the building? I, I can respond. And again, we also have John Wanger here Please. at the meeting. Um, yes, the um, section uh, we had verified with the city attorney prior to the meeting um, on what in fact triggers a project to be water neutral um, and the um, requirements that are codified in chapter 1312 basically specify a new development, uh, which, uh, you know, the highlights of that would be freestanding building, um, 
where you, you, know, you have new construction, you're adding new floor area additions um, and, uh, and anything that would normally increase that, that water um, use. And John, I, I know you're on the, the call here, but I wanted, or the meeting, I wanted to also let you further um, explain since this is really your, uh, your wheelhouse Good evening, commissioners. Um, my aide did a great job. Um, there was a concern <clears throat> that staff had <clears throat> to ensure that this project was going to be in compliance with the phase two emergency that we're in. And as Maya indicated, we did consult with the city attorney's office. And they did confirm that based on the actions that the applicant was taking, um, the fact that it was an existing use, um, the fact that there was no significant expansions of uh, water from the existing use um, that we were in compliance with that. Um, but I but I do encourage the condition that you have recommended to be included within the, the resolution to be included. Thank you for that clarification. Um, I would just like to add that that almost seems like a material weakness in the city's approach. Um, that it's tied to the building and not the use. So if we had a building that wasn't altered, but the use was such that all of a sudden it was using 10 times the amount of water, um, by that we'd have difficulty saying no. Um, I think that, that now is a problem and the way the long-term forecasts are going is gonna be a problem ad infinitum. So it's perhaps something I would think the city might want to address in the future, if that is at all legally possible for them to address it. Um, any, uh, any other questions of staff? Uh, seeing none, once again, on your little tiny boxes, um, I would like to invite the applicant to speak if they care to. Hi everyone, I uh, just want to thank you for considering this project. Um, let's give you a, a little bit of background. Um, my family and I own uh, Erosion Wine Co. Uh, on uh, 1234 Main Street. Our have our uh, tasting room there for our winery and right next door we will uh, soon uh, hopefully have our uh, tasting room uh, kind of for our brewery as well. And um, I came from the craft beer industry uh, prior to getting into wine, um, had a, a brewery in uh, Orange County called The Brewery that I started in 2008 and uh, look forward to uh, as much as I love wine. I love, uh, well, I don't know. I love beer and wine equally, I guess the right thing to say. Anyway, I look forward to uh, being able to provide uh, uh, St. Helena with some great beer and I'll, uh, I'll stop talking and let you guys ask any questions. Thank you. Um, any questions of the applicant? I, I have one, but it's more of a curiosity than anything else. Why is there Canadian license plates stuck on the picture of the brewing equipment? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm buying it from a, a brewery in Canada uh, called uh, ADA Brewing Company. So they're okay. in uh, Calgary. So they send you the, the license, license plate plates. too? I don't I think they're going to keep them. I'm going to guess. Okay. <laughs> uh, with that, I don't see anybody else wanting to ask another odd question of the applicant. So I will uh, ask Ms. Gamero, is there any member of the public who has indicated they wish to speak? There are no members of the public that wish to speak, Chair Pont. Okay, thank you. Um, we'll bring it back to the commission then and we'll uh, close the public hearing. Uh, and is there any commissioner who wishes to uh, start the ball rolling on this discussion? And it's fair to ask for a beer, no. No, seriously, does he have any specialty? Um, <laughs> what? what? <laughs> uh, you don't have to answer that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> better, off if, better off if he didn't. Yeah. <laughs> All right. 
Um, I don't see anybody, uh, but I, I will say uh, this looks like a, a fine small project and uh, I would like to see it proceed. Um, with that, if there's no other comments, um, a motion is appropriate. Does someone care to make a motion? Vice Chair Hale. I move that we um, approve, find the project exempt from CEQA as, and also that the uh, amended condition is entered as, um, as, as worked through with um, my, Mrs. DeRosa and um, Mrs. Powell, Power. Um, I think it's uh, nice to see it kind of just use, use, use a space more, so. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Commissioner Anderson. Yes, you're the second, I believe. Uh, Ms. Camaro, will you tally the votes, please? Vice Chair Hale? Yes. Commissioner Anderson? Yes. Commissioner Segura? Yes. Commissioner Rothbell? Yes. And uh, Chair Pont? Yes. Thank you very much. Uh, this takes us to uh, six new business under which we have 6.1, our town St. Helena overview and update. Um, Director DeRosa, are you gonna get us rolling on this one, please? Certainly. Um, it's my pleasure uh, to welcome the uh, Our Town St. Helena team uh, this evening. Um, I think the timing is great for a lot of reasons. Uh, as you know, we kicked off our housing element officially uh, uh, in March, and uh, we are um, starting to work very closely on looking at our housing policies and um, advocacy. And uh, they have been a great partner with the city. And uh, I'm uh, excited to hear what they're going to share with the, our commission, particularly with our newest commission members of the really important work they do in our community. Um, and how we can uh, continue to support them. So um, thank you. And uh, Jennifer, uh, welcome. I think we need to unmute Jennifer. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. And do you see my screen? Yeah, we probably want you to have it be in slideshow mode. I will go there. Thank you. Okay. Let me just do one more thing real quick. Perfect. Good evening, Chair Pont and Commissioners. Um, thank you for this opportunity to reintroduce Our Town St. Helena to you and your newly appointed members and to update you on our activities. Now I'm trying to advance my screen. Okay, um, just for a little background, um, Our Town is a small nonprofit organization that was formed in 2008 by a group of longtime community members who were concerned about the lack of affordable housing in St. Helena. The organization has evolved over time from an advocacy group to a housing facilitator and developer of housing that is affordable to vital community members. And you can see our vision stated here on the screen. In the last year, uh, Our Town has taken some meaningful steps to evolve the organization including leasing office space on Church Street right before the pandemic and the shutdown. Uh, we, uh, Our Town hired an executive director, which is myself. And um, we also expanded the board to nine positions and we added three new members. You can see in italics, uh, the three new members. Um, the other members have been on the board for a very long time. Um, 
and our president, Steve Goldfarb, is here tonight. Mary Stevenson, past president, and I saw that uh, new member Justin Sterling is here as well. And I don't know if I missed anybody, maybe someone joined us just recently. But our board of directors is a group of highly skilled volunteers who provide technical support to the organization to advance our mission. The rest of the team, um, we have internal uh, paid team members that are listed here. Um, and you know, a vital part of our work is partnering with um, the city and local government as well as state and federal government, um, working with other housing developers and strategic industry partners and volunteers and community groups. Our focus is to increase housing opportunities for people vital to the St. Helena community. To accomplish that, we undertake a number of activities, including property acquisition to preserve existing affordable housing or build new affordable housing, partnering with other nonprofit housing developers to assist with pre-development, obtaining financing and building housing, and partnering with the local government agencies for development assistance through loans and other and project approvals. We also provide community education and informational resources. Our town's two-pronged approach to providing affordable housing appears fair, fairly straightforward, but it is anything but. Property is expensive and continues to escalate. Sites are scarce. Obtaining financing is complicated and time-consuming. Regulations are plentiful. Construction materials and costs are escalating over time. And ongoing management and monitoring of properties are long-term obligations that take resources. All of these factors work against making housing affordable because the projects have to at least break even over time, which is why public sub subsidies are often required. Despite these challenges though, we continue to make some steady progress. And here's one example. Um, you're probably familiar with the Brankel Court self-help housing project, but this is where eight families are contributing 65% of the labor to build their own single family homes. The project is tracking to be complete in late summer and is on budget, despite setbacks from wildfires and the pandemic. We are aiming to hold a ribbon cutting in early August and we'll be sending information out to you about that in the coming months. These families will own their own homes, which is really something to celebrate. And an added bonus is that they will move out of existing rental properties, which will make those available for other members of the community. And if you haven't seen the project, um, there are people out there almost every day of the week and weekends are a great time to stop by and see the progress and say hello to the families that are out there building their homes. Another project we're working on is the 963 Pope Street uh, project, which is a five unit affordable rental project. Our town purchased the property and converted the existing cottage to an affordable rental. We will be constructing four flats and two buildings behind the cottage and all five <laughs> units will be deed restricted. Awesome. Bless you. Um, the city has been a supportive partner and provided a 400. Hey, don't forget your bill. Oh. I'm sorry, um, provided a $450,000 loan to assist with development and a fee waiver valued at just over $100,000. Our town has contracted with Napa Valley Community Housing to be the project manager. Construction drawings are at 95% and we are now seeking a contractor and working on obtaining the financing for the, for the construction. Our hope is to begin construction in fourth quarter of this year and complete the project in late 2022. And just for an example of preservation, our town is working with the city to fund the purchase of this existing four unit apartment building called um, Christine Apartments. The sellers, uh, Joe and Robin Orsini have been extremely generous and patient with this transaction as it has taken a long time to get a funding commitment through the community development block grant program. The city has been instrumental in this process, working with the State Department of Housing and Community Development and our town appreciates the support from the council and the staff to make this happen. While we are encouraged by these projects and others we are pursuing, the environment we are all working in will continue to add significant pressures and urgency to our mission. 
we see that the St. Helena population is shrinking based on census data. We know families are leaving because they can't afford to live here as our home prices continue to escalate and our local workforce doesn't earn nearly enough to afford a home in our town. Um, this is an older slide from the city's white paper, but it shows the distribution of household income has experienced a decline in middle income households. Um, households earning 25,000 to 100,000 declined by about 42% from the years 2000 to 2015. And while this graph is somewhat out, outdated, we can assume that the gap is increasing, particularly with the pandemic and the impact that is having on our workforce. When we talk about affordable, um, you know, we're talking about the government definition, which is based on the area median income or what we call AMI, which is designated by county. Napa County's AMI is just over $100,000 for a four person household. St. Helena's median household income is lower at 90,000, which may partially be due to the portion of the population living on fixed incomes, combined with renters who earn lower wages in the agricultural and hospitality industries. At the same time, rents are comparatively higher in St. Helena than the rest of Napa County. The government guideline is that no more than 30% of a household income should be consumed by housing costs, which for the county means around $30,000 a year or $2,500 a month. Um, this slide illustrates segments of St. Helena's workforce vital to the community's health and well being. The workers that can afford to live in our town shop at our stores, patronize local businesses, vote in our elections, send their children to our schools participate in our churches, clubs, and special events, and are the future of our community. And what this shows is that um, the unskilled workforce um, earning around, you know, between 29 dollars and $41,000 a year is the fastest growing segment of the workforce. Only a small percentage of St. Helena's housing stock is affordable. And for that portion of the stock that is affordable, very little has been built in the last 20 years. Our town is doing all we can to change this. And we hope the city planning commission, city council and the community at large will be willing to get creative and help address this problem. For 2021, our board has established some goals which will require assistance from city leaders. We encourage you and the council to think outside the box and make affordable housing a top priority along with other important priorities like water and infrastructure. We are excited that the housing element update work is beginning and I am looking forward to being part of the focus group for that effort and thank you for inviting me. We particularly appreciate that there will be an action plan that results from the work, but we also don't want to delay meaningful action that needs to start today like identifying and securing larger parcels for multi-unit housing developments and doing the pre-development work necessary to move these projects forward. We don't believe the city or the community can afford to defer meaningful progress while the element and the environmental document are being prepared. So we urge the staff and the commission to consider near-term opportunities as the process is unfolding so we can work together to make a real difference in our town. And that concludes my presentation. And uh, my board members who are here and myself are happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much, Ms. La Liberté. Um, questions, please. No, um, Commissioner Anderson. I don't have any questions. I just wanted to thank her for the presentation and um, and the work that they're doing in town. It's it's really important. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Commissioner Segura. I don't know if you can uh, answer this question, or it uh, it's made prematurely. Do you have any potential sites that um, could accommodate housing as such as your program develops? Yes, ma'am, we, um, we have identified a number of sites throughout the city. There aren't very many, and, and some of them are city owned. Some of them are not 
currently zoned for residential. Um, and so there really are only a handful of sites that are, are currently you know, designated and um, for, for multifamily housing. Um, so it's gonna take, you know, we're gonna have, to, as part of the housing element process, I know we'll be um, identifying sites, uh, but that's where we're gonna have to maybe get creative. Thank you. Um, and and uh, thank you for the presentation. It was wonderful. And to a degree eye-opening as to the need of uh, low income housing and affordable housing. And I'm looking forward to work with you in the focus group. Likewise, thank you so much. Thank you for this opportunity if there are no other questions, um, but I do look forward to getting to know you better as we can, oh, and I see there's a hand, so I will be quiet. Um, please, uh, Ms. Stevenson, do you wish to speak? Yes, um, I um, tell you that our board is ex is exceedingly happy to have Jen on as our executive director. She brings a wealth of um, of, uh, of experience and also some new thinking, which is going to help us. Um, since the planning commission doesn't have any questions for us, I'd like to ask them a couple of questions. Um, <laughs> one is. What do you think the planning commission can do to help us get more housing built in St. Helena? We probably, well, it's, it's on the agenda to hear from you, um, but I don't think we should speculate um, on what we can or can't do. Um, as, as you know, the the Planning Commission is a quasi-judicial group and doesn't write the rules, um, just tries to enforce them evenly um, across zones. Um, we do have some opportunity to suggest rules and we will have uh, two commissioners on the housing element rewrite committee. Um, but as far as actually directly helping uh, what is clearly a great need in the city for uh, more low cost and moderately priced housing, I, I don't think we actually have much of a role in, in, in helping our town St. Nerlina directly. Uh, that's the council's purview, I'm afraid. Can I make another comment? Please. Um, some of the things that we've asked the city to do, which uh, might be of interest to the planning commission is that we think it would be important to have an ongoing dialogue uh, between city staff and um, commissioners and elected officials on housing to meet in the beginning once a month and then bi-monthly, not as a Brown Act kind of meeting, but just as a, um, an informal, dialogue so that we can get some of these housing things that we're talking about into a discussion because we can't seem to get a discussion going and it would be great if any of the planning commissioners would be willing to join that group. The second thing we've asked is that we'd like to see us scrounge up enough money to hire somebody who can be a housing and economic development staff person or consultant who can take this on because the existing staff is, is uh, consumed with the housing element and the zoning process and all the other projects like 5,000 square feet houses that are being built. And so we'd like to see if there's a way to get that done. And thirdly, we really think the city should commit to building another stone bridge within the next 10 years. And we'd have to start today in order to get that built within the 10 years. So those are big picture items that, that um, if anyone is interested in talking about that further offline, please contact Jen or any of the board members so we can get some stuff happening while we're waiting for all the, um, the paperwork for the general plan and the zoning review to be done. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I, I think we certainly all recognize that, that 
housing is a, a problem in town um, and the huge price increases are a problem in town. Uh, several of the commissioners have um, spoken out on that subject as we've had projects come in front of us. I think you heard some of it tonight. Um, you know, as, as the planning commission will continue to do what we can, uh, but we have uh, neither the purse strings nor the ink pen to write the rule book. Um, that really is the council. Um, any more questions? No, hearing none. Oh, uh, yes, Vice Chair Hale. Um, I, I do think the one thing that um, we we should be thinking about as a as a commission though is is the power of of introducing and and speaking openly about certain narratives like density, um, and you know, so that that doesn't um, come as a, as a surprise you know conversation you know after the fact. And I think, I think we can kind of seed to some extent the approach that uh, uh, groups like uh, our town have and, and sort of encourage density because Almost. The, the, the reality of, of the lay of the land, the demographic here, and, and uh, there, there only is so much of it. I, I think, you know, and I've, I've talked to you guys before about this kind of encouraging density. Um, and I think I, I throw that out there just as a general, uh, you know, I think, I think we, have to, we have to sow the narrative that, um, that we want to see that, that, that does begin to enable some of this. I mean, it's not our, we're not policymakers, but uh, then we can sway the narrative. Um, so I, you know, I, I look forward to kind of working with you guys. I think you've done some amazing uh, things and I and I certainly encourage you to keep at it and I I think we should also just encourage you know our, ourselves and and the community to, to better understand the need um, you know because after after sitting down uh, with some of these groups I think you you begin to realize that you know they're they're kind of rungs on the ladder they're tiers of need and um, Different groups uh, service different uh, different clients uh, within that spectrum, but um, you know I think I think part of the the narrative should be just you know get out there and, and learn more about what uh, what the need the nature of the need is um, and and what the what the challenges are. Um, I'm sure density will be. Um on the screen for both the, the housing element update committee and I know it's on the screen for the, the zoning code subcommittee. Um, and yes, we have a terrible need. Uh, I, I don't think I could afford the house I've got today. Um, the, the blowback from what we've done over the years is, is highly visible. Uh, just step out on Main Street at, uh, at Grayson um, any morning, and you'll see, you know, 80, 90 percent of our workers coming into work. They can't afford to live here. Um, the hospital has had trouble getting doctors. They can't afford to live here. Um, we need to fix that. And like you said, Dan, density is probably one of the few levers that the city has to pull. But we're gonna have to uh, put our oar in the water and pull um, because we have a very large arena number we need to design for. So 103 units of low and very low is gonna be very tough here in the next eight years. Um, adding 10% to our housing stock in eight years uh, will be probably a nearly impossible task, uh, but we have to design for that soon. So uh, we have uh, two commissioners will be sitting on that committee, Commissioner Anderson and Commissioner Segura. Um, I wish you well. Anything else from anyone? No, thank you very much for coming this evening. Thank you, uh, appreciate the opportunity.
That takes us down to schedule items. We have none. Uh, number eight is department reports. Uh, Director DeRosa, do you have anything? Yeah, I uh, will take a moment just to provide another update on our, our zoning code update process for the commission and um, any members of the public that are listening. Um, so we're, we're well into um, our subcommittee meetings uh, and uh, we're still in part three, which is the development standards and uses. Uh, when we get through all the sections of the code uh, and have that ready to be published, we will have our first series of three public meetings that are gonna be joint meetings with the Planning Commission and the Council. Um, and uh, we'll, I'm gonna be getting an updated schedule from uh, Lisa Wise uh, next week. So once I have that, I can probably share that at the next uh, Planning Commission meeting. Um, and also, uh, as I was looking at the scope, I realized that the zoning map is not part of their current um, work effort and there obviously is going to be some zoning map uh, changes and a refresh needed so I will be taking an item to council to request that a uh, scope amendment be approved so that can go along with the text amendments all at one time. Uh, so that's my brief update on the zoning code and of course anytime outside of these meetings feel free to call me or email me if you want any more information. And that's all I have for my uh, report tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so that takes us down to item nine, uh, agenda forecast. Um, a list of all current planning projects is available on the city website. Uh, this is also time for uh, any member of the commission to uh, request items to be placed on a future agenda. Is there anyone that has an item they wish to be placed on a future agenda? Oh, uh, Commissioner Anderson, please. Okay. Would this be an appropriate time to ask if we could have a discussion about um, the possibility in the future of needing tank water on properties? Are you talking about capturing water? Yeah, rainwater capture and um, things like that. Let me let me ask uh, uh, Director DeRosa this. Uh, I think that would be a, a, a building code item. Um, okay. Is there at any point that uh, the commission has uh, suggestions to make on the building codes? Um, not the building codes, but let me do uh, say that in terms of coming attractions for, uh, I believe April, the, the CIP uh, will be presented to the planning commission and our um, acting public works director will, um, I think at that time you can bring up this subject that's of interest um, because it is related to water and water mm -hmm. conservation. Um, and then let's, um, and in the meantime, I'll give him a heads up that you asked about that okay. and the city manager as well. And then we can see where's, where's the right place for that to land. How's that Thank sound? Well, I, I, I think under that rubric, we may want to look at at that as a, a green city approach. Um, so maybe other items would appear under, under green cities. Um, I know several cities are looking at uh, uh, restricting natural gas connections in new construction. Uh, several cities are uh, demanding uh, larger installation of photovoltaics. So maybe we could look at uh, uh, you know, our, our, our own building um, code could ask for uh, LED platinum standards, uh, those kinds of things. So maybe we should uh, uh, look at, at, at uh, green approaches in general of which water collection would be one, if that's at all possible. Okay, I think that's great. All right, um, anything else for the good of the order? Um, hearing done, um, you can call me Lester now if you want. Uh, <laughs> meeting adjourned. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Thank you. Good, good job, Sinia. Very good job. <laughs> <laughs> good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Sinia. Yeah.